about my um, supercharged sukun nugget. Okay? Tell you about my supercharged sukun. This is becoming difficult. Tonight, I'm going to tell you about my supercharged super nugget. Oh, it worked! <laughs> and you ruined it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so I've bought it 20 million years ago while they were still cheap, um, inspired by a car throttle video. At the time, I had no garage lifts or, or, or any of those fancy things, so um, I needed something that's, something that's simple, rear-wheel drive and fun. Well, there was only this and BMW 3 Series, so um, the, the choice was obvious. <laughs> I've been modifying this thing for the past three years um, and I know this chassis is flawed so um, these are four things you need to fix to make a perfect daily driver. I will advise you to start with brakes but we all know we want to hear about power mod so let's just go ahead. For cheap power, you've got two choices. You can either go supercharged or turbo. Um, there's like bolt-on kits available for both. Um, I'm not gonna tell you which one's better because that's, that's a personal thing really, but I can give you pros and cons. Supercharger, um, it's gonna be way easier to install if you're doing it yourself. Um, it's, give, it's gonna give you a really smooth power delivery. And it's genuinely something out of the box, so it's kind of fun, I will say. But you will have to fight bell slip and there's things to get rid of it. And there's one last thing that's really annoying and it's the wine. It's really cool when you're accelerating, but it's a bit less cool when you're actually slowing down, downshifting or cruising. It's just, it's always there. Option two is the turbo. Um, and with the turbo, you get all the sweet six cylinder um, boosted noises, which well, just, they're just fucking awesome. So get rid of the wine. So you've got the power throughout the entire rev range, um, but you've got the turbo lag. But you can easily fight it fitting a smaller turbo. And because those engines can only get up to 300 horsepower, it's not a problem really. So my personal choice was actually quite funny because um, I was building on my driveway so I went with the supercharger because it was just that easy and way cheaper at the time than turbo but now we can get those now for a bit over 1300 quid and um, you can't really fight this value it's really good so I'm going turbo soon and the blue ISO 100 on our channel is getting one of those as well. So the biggest issue with the chassis is, well, right after being underpowered, is front brakes. They are getting stuck every three months and you have to redo the pins or whatever. Um, so obviously we have to replace them. I mean, you can either go overkill and get um, our friend's Mark's big brake Brembo kit that's using Evo 9 calipers, which is bloody amazing. Or you can go, I think it was LS400, LS400 big brake upgrade. Um, those are slightly smaller than this, so slightly less overkill. They're still gonna fix the issue, um, but just look at them. <laughs> Brembo's are just better. the wheels and tires here um, to actually accommodate the bigger brakes you need bigger wheels uh, for ours it's at least 18 inch and not every 18 inch set will actually have enough space it was about 420 millimeters inside of the barrel to actually fit the brakes and 
and I went with wide body on my car because just, I just wanted to be able to fit more tire. That's just my personal thing. And um, this setup is temporary, but that, that's what I had available at the time. Thanks, Matt. Hopefully, soon I'll upgrade to something that's actually showing the, the awesome, amazing brakes. Because, you know, enough. Okay. They're, not, they're not for braking, they're actually cool looking. <laughs> obvious modification is the suspension. Stock is really boaty. But if you like comfort, keep it stock. I'm fine with it. But if you want something better, there's, there's a giant range of coilovers that you can choose from, from really cheap to really expensive. We found Tane's Advanced E-Series. They, they are really good bang for the back setup. I've put together a custom set um, using 12 kilogram springs on all four corners. And um, I just bought like three sets of coilovers to just get all the top and bottom mounts of them and use um, gas adjustable shocks in them. I went with adjustable shocks just to be, you know, able to control how stiff the car is. Because when you have a daily, you don't want it to be on the track setup at all times. But I, I know it's obvious. and. Um, and I went with 12 kilogram springs because I actually went through sets of 8, 10, 12, and 14. Um, obviously, 8, a bit too soft, 14, way too harsh. Um, I found 12s to be like happy medium. I might move over to 10 kilogram springs and just use the shocks to get, get it a bit stiffer. But that's one thing that, that's like in development, and we'll see how it goes in the future. exhaust um, it's actually fairly restrictive so um, I went with the Cobra system it does actually resonated and it's fairly quiet on motorways if you want to go rowdy go straight pipe you're gonna hate it <laughs> <laughs> So um, I've added a few personal touches. I do like like 80s, 90s, Jap shit boxy era. Um, so I've added a quite pretty old Nardi with some titanium bolts, short shifter, and um, titanium weighted shifter as well. Shifter knob, Jesus. Future plans for the car are, um, we are actually putting full on liveries, making it actually look cohere and pretty and less nuggetry, which is a really weird concept for me, because if I actually genuinely like how it looks, I'll start caring about the looks. It's weird. It's gonna be a problem. And of course, the turbo key. Yes, um, and, and the biggest change will be under the bonnet, because I'm moving over from a supercharger to a turbo. Stay tuned for that.